I tell you how to find a maximum or a minimum value for a function of two or three variables, let's talk about what you did in Calc 1. So in Calc 1, once you found your critical points, how do you know if a point was a relative max or min? Well, first of all, how did you find your critical points? Found the derivative. Set it equal to zero. What else? Or when the first derivative was undefined. Once you found those critical points, how did you know which ones were relative max and relative min? First derivative test or? Second derivative test. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do today. Today we are going to be looking at some function of x and y. So let's sketch out a possibility. So this is just some random surface. But I want us to be able to see which points are relative max and which points are relative min. So let's just say that this is some portion of that function f of xy. Any of the peaks that we see are relative max. So in this case, how many relative max are there? Three. Right, this is a relative max, this is a relative max, that's a relative max. All of the valleys, which there's one, are going to be the relative min. Thank you, Alex. Bye. Okay, so this one here is our relative min. The highest max. is going to be your absolute max. And your lowest min is going to be the absolute minimum. OK, in this case, we cannot tell the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum. Why can we not def tell which one is the absolute max and which one's the absolute minimum? Yes, it's only a portion of f of x, y. If we restricted the domain to only this portion, then we can say this is the absolute maximum. But right now, we don't know the absolute maximum because we don't have the entire f of x, y. Sound good so far? Okay. It's going to lead us to some definitions. A function f has a relative max. OK, your book, for some reason, uses the term local. I would say relative is the term that's used most often. But those two are going to mean the same. At some point, x not, y not, if there exists a disk centered at x not, y not, such that f of x not y not is greater than or equal to f of x y for all x y in the disk. Okay, here's what that means. If I choose some point, like this point here that's x not y not. I'm then looking at a disk around it. This, will, this point will give us a relative max or a relative min for this function as long as the value of f at that point is at least as big as the value at every other point in that disk. Does that make sense? Yeah, you guys with me? This is what you guys did in Calc 1. In Calc 1, you didn't look at a disk, though. You looked just at an interval. So if you were looking at x equals 2, 
you created an interval centered at x equals 2, and as long as y was bigger at x equals 2 than ever at the point, that was called a relative max. Sound familiar? Okay, I'm not going to write the definitions for all of them. A relative min, though, remember local might be a term used as well. This is when f of x not y not is less than or equal to f of xy in the disk. f of xy for all the points in that disk. The absolute max, that's going to be when f of x not y not is greater than or equal to f of xy for all xy in the domain. So it's not just some disk, it's for all points. Okay, and then likewise, we have absolute min. This is when f of x not y not is less than or equal to f of xy for all xy in the domain. Here's what we're interested in knowing today. We are going to be finding critical points. So we want to know how do we find those critical points. Once we, once we find them, how do we know if they're relative max, relative min, absolute max, absolute min. And then given a function, how do we know even if there is a, a max or a So that's what we're going to talk about. Quick vocab before we get into any theorems. First term we need to know is what is meant by a bounded set. Okay, bounded set is when you have two dimensions, or that's where we're going to be looking. We say a set of points is bounded if we can draw a rectangle around those points. For example, if we're looking at these points on the xy plane, we say these, this point or these points are bounded because we can draw some rectangle around those points. A set that is unbounded would be if we were considering all the points in the first quadrant. If we look at all the points in the x quadrant, there's no way for us to draw a rectangle around those points. In three space, you are going to draw a prism, a cube, a box, whatever term you want to use. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, this is not random. We need this idea of bounded for what we're going to do next. So here's our goal in today's notes. We want to determine, first of all, if there are relative extrema. If there are, we want to find their location. OK, we got few more things to write down, and then we'll do some examples. So I know this is a lot of notes, but it's background to what we need. First theorem that we need to know is called the extreme value theorem. Here's what the extreme value theorem says. If we have some function f of x, y, and that function is continuous on a closed and bounded 
set R. Then F has both an absolute max and an absolute min. Okay, so we're going to draw an example so that you can see what I mean by this closed set R. R is going to be a set in two dimensions, so in x and y. So let's consider the bounded set where x is between 0 and 2 and y is between 0 and 4. So this here is our bounded set. I'm counting by half on the y-axis because I want to give myself a little more room. So what you're going to do then is with your function fy or f of xy, you're going to look what is happening when x is between 0 and 2 and y is between 0 and 4. And it might be something like this. So I'm just drawing the plane to give myself a little bit of perspective. OK, so in this case, we know definitively this is a, a closed and bounded set. Therefore, our function has to have at least an absolute max and absolute min. This here would be our absolute max. This here is our absolute min. Of course, we're interested, though, in relative max and relative min as well. Today, we're going to talk about how to find relative max and min. The next theorem will tell us a little bit how to do that. And then Monday, we'll talk about how to find absolute. Questions on the extreme value theorem before we write down another theorem? OK, great. Here's our next theorem. If f has a relative extremum at a point x0, y0, and if the first order partials of f exist, x not y not then the first partial with respect to x at that point and the first partials with respect to y at that point are both going to equal zero okay so this does not tell us how to find the relative extrema but it tells us if we have a relative extremum that our first partials are going to be zero so here, we have a relative max, and then we have the two absolute maxes, which will also be relative max and mins. At each of these points, the first partials with respect to x and y are going to be 0, as long as those first partials exist. OK. I got like five more minutes of stuff for us to write down before we do examples. Questions so far? No. OK. What is this saying? if the first partial with respect to x at that point is 0. What is that saying? Yeah, not changing the x direction, not changing the y direction. So that makes, should make sense. At this point, go a little bit in each direction, and you're not, the value of y is not, or the value of z, rather, is not changing, or f. Now, there is another case where that happens, but where we don't have a relative extrema. So there's more. You guys are a very exciting bunch today. OK. I'm going to draw a figure. 
I don't want any. I do not want any comments about how bad my figure is. Got it? Okay. Don't act like you guys don't comment about my poor drawing. It's gonna be a rough one, guys. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that's what I was going for. Uh, except saddle is not the math term. Hyperbolic paraboloid. It's a hyperbolic paraboloid. It's a Pringle. A tank top? It's a Pringle. Oh, please don't ever say that. Okay, if we look here, and we pick this point here. Okay, this point is a maximum in the x direction. Do we see that? Okay, do we see though in the y direction, it's a minimum? Do you guys see that for this point? So y direction is this way. So the y direction I have a minimum, but in the x direction I have a maximum. Okay, so this is another point where those first partials are gonna be a zero, both be zero. But that point is not a max or a min. That point is a very special point and it is called a saddle point. <laughs> okay. Questions on the idea of relative max, absolute max, mins, saddle points, besides how to find them? Okay. Are we ready to learn how to actually find these? Yes. Okay, great. We are gonna use what is called the second partials test. Second partials test is kinda like the second derivative test. Here's what the second partials test said. Let f be a function of two variables. with continuous second order partials in some disk centered around a critical point x not y not and let D be the following. D is going to be the second partial with respect to X at our point X not Y not. Second partial with respect to Y at X not Y not. Subtract F of X Y at the point squared. Okay, there's going to be three cases. If D can be greater than zero, or if D is greater than zero, that tells you something. If D is less than zero, that tells you something. If D is equal to zero, the test is inconclusive. Okay, so if D is equal to zero, the test is inconclusive, similar to the second derivative test. We don't have any other test, though. So you need to know that if we get d equals zero, it's inconclusive. I'm not going to give you any problems like that because we don't have another test to use. Okay, in the case where d is less than zero, that means that your point x not y not is a saddle point. Okay, if d is greater than zero, you're going to have to specifically look at the second derivative with respect to x at your point. If the second derivative with respect to x is greater than zero, that tells you that your point x not y not is a relative min. And that should make sense. This is kind of like the idea of concave up. If you're concave up, 
you're gonna have a relative min. If your second derivative with respect to x at your point x not y not is less than zero, that tells you that your point is a relative max. Those are all the different scenarios. For the relative max and relative min, you can also use the second partial with respect to y instead. So if you wanted to use y instead of x, that's fine. OK. We're going to do one example together, and then I'm going to have you guys do one. Do we have any questions about the second partials test? OK. So here's our first example. Consider your function f of xy is going to be negative x cubed, add 4xy, subtract 2y squared, plus 1. We are going to find all relative extrema. First step, before we even use the second partials test, we need to find all the critical points. If a point is a relative max or a relative min, the first partials will be equal to 0. So you need to find all points where the first partials are equal to 0. So if we take the first partial with respect to x, we get negative 3x squared plus 4y. That has to equal 0. If we take the first partial with respect to y, we get 4x minus 4y equals 0. This is a system, then, that you have to solve. If I use the bottom equation, this tells me that 4x is equal to 4y. So I'm going to substitute in 4x for 4y. So I get negative 3x squared, add 4x equals 0. factor out an x. This gives me x equals 0, and then x equals 4 thirds. So our critical points then are 0, 0, and 4 thirds, comma, 4 thirds. I just plugged them back in here. OK, with me so far? Next thing that we're going to do once we have those critical points is we're going to use the second partials test. I'm going to show you the way I organize this. Anytime I use the second partials test, I write a table because there's a bunch of information that we're going to need. So that's what I would suggest for you. The first column, I always put what the critical points are. Then I find the value of d. So that's fxx, fyy, minus f of xy squared. In the case where the value of d is positive, we're then going to have to look at the second derivative with respect to x or with respect to y. doesn't matter which one. And then we have a conclusion. Bless you. So in this case, our critical points are 0, 0, and 4 thirds, 4 thirds. We need to find everything for d. So d is that fxx, fyy, minus f of xy squared. First partials with respect to x and y we found above. So fxx, f of x was that negative 3x squared plus 4y. So fxx will be negative 6x. fyy will be negative 4. fxy, so if I use f of x and then now I take the derivative with respect to y, I get 4. 
Remember that that should be the same as f of yx. So either of those that you want to find is fine. Okay, so this d here, ffx, or fxx at our point, plugging in 0 for x. We get 0, fyy is negative 4, minus fxy squared. Okay, all I care about with d is if it's positive, negative, or 0. So you don't need to actually calculate this. All you need to know is that that's less than 0. Okay, less than zero automatically tells us that this is a saddle point. Don't even have to consider the second derivative with respect to x. If we plug in four thirds, plugging four thirds into fxx, we get negative eight. Fyy is negative four, minus that four squared. Again, all we care about is that this is positive. Case of positive could be a relative max, could be a relative min. So we're going to look at the second derivative with respect to x. Again, all you care about is positive or negative. If I plug in 4 thirds, this is going to be negative. Negative is similar to the idea of concave down, which means that we have a relative max. So then we're going to say 0, 0 is a saddle point. 4 thirds, 4 thirds is a relative max. Okay. Questions about finding critical points or the second partials test? Wait, so when we found the x equals 4 thirds, so then you just put that back into the one of the partial equations? Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing I will warn you about is when you're doing your homework, please make sure you pay attention to what you are asked for. So you might be asked, what is the output of the relative max? What is the input? Where does it occur? Things like that. So make sure that you give the information that you are asked for. You get what I'm saying? Okay, you're going to do one example. Here's the example that you are going to do. f of xy is 4xy subtract x to the fourth subtract y to the fourth. Okay, what I want you to do is do the entire process. Uh, I want you, at a minimum, to check your critical points with the person next to you. So you have questions asked, but at a minimum, check the critical points.
If you have not checked with the person next to you, check wherever you are with the person next to you. How many critical points did we find? Three. Okay, you should have found three. So if you didn't find three, look back. Do we need another minute or two?
I'm going to show you my work. my table again I don't care that you find these values you need to at a minimum tell me if they're positive or negative what some people do is they write plus for positive negative for minus please don't do that it's not good notation I don't know what that means so write greater than zero or less than zero or equal to zero how did we do okay Okay, any questions on finding the relative external? No? So like, do we, when we find them, do we have to like write out, or can we just say like, like do we have to write like how we find it? Like, I, you know, like last year we had to like write like by the first word of the thing. No. Okay. This is the minimum of what I want to see. I do want you guys to at least write something out here so I don't have to read from the table, but no, you don't have to refer to any text. Okay, any questions on th 